I think it's time to get over to the Ask the Experts. Um, Matt and Richard, I'll be passing you uh, for control in one second, but Richard's our Head of Service Management and Matt is our Lead Engineer. So Matt and Richard, over to you. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for the introduction, Caroline. So welcome to the RC Expert session. It's the first one of these we've done for a number of years in Tiger. Um, this is going to be on analytics today, uh, but we will be potentially looking to do these on other topics going forward. So as Caroline kindly said, if you have any questions, comments, observations as we're going through this, then please do put them in the chat. I'll be monitoring that as, as we run through this session and I will do my best to include them for you. So um, as Caroline said, I'm, I'm the Head of Service Management here at Tiger and I've got Matt with me today, who is our lead engineer and very much the expert on all things PRISM. Um, we'll go straight into it. So for those that have kindly put questions in, we've got those questions here. We're going to just let everyone know what they were and, and we'll run through and give you some answers. So. The first question we had was from Paul. Um, this is a we're going to do a Teams related session first for, for analytics. So the first question we had from Paul, and it was reporting around call queues, auto attendance, and channel call queues, um, if different at all. So, Matt, I think this is a good question. It's kind of understanding how data is displayed differently. Do you want to give us a little overview of it, please? Good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to the Connect event. So. We're going to start looking then around analytics and how we can get information about Teams call queues. Um, so when you're logged into Prism, you'll be going into analytics here to get the information out. On the left hand side, you will have a section under here called Teams call queues. Under the Teams call queues section, within here, what you'll have is the ability then to see all calls that go into your queues in an itemized way that you can export and then take into potentially a, another system or just to view the data. So I'm just going to cover off a couple of simple things with analytics if you've not seen it before. Um, I'm going to start by showing you up in the top left hand corner, you have the ability to hide this menu. So while you're doing work on analytics, you may want to make the screen bigger, so you can hide this menu on the left to give you a bit more space on the screen. There is also an extra option here on the right that you can use to hide and bring back the side menu as well, just as a bit of advice there. If you're looking at data, you may want more real estate on the screen, so you can shrink and expand from here. So looking at the call queues, well, what information can we get from here? So I'm going to look at calls, uh, sorry, calls into the call queues for last month. And what we do within analytics here is we get the date that the call came in, a call flow summary. So what this is, is the initiator, the queue it went into last, and the person that picked it up. What the call queue, the last call queue name was here, and the agent that picked it up, the final call result, talk time, etc. here. Now, that's useful information that you make and then export from here. But you may want to add additional columns in. So let's say after here, I want to know how long they were in the auto attendant for before they came into the call queue. So I can start typing in our columns here, things like the auto attendant duration. I can then add in things like, well, who else was involved in this call? So I want to know all my call participants as well from here. Um, what I also want to know is something that's interesting to me is, is the caller external to the company to me? Because when I'm doing statistics, I may not want external callers. Um, and did they go to an auto attendant or not before going into the call queue? So did they bypass the call queue before going in, in here? So if I now run this here, so I've added the extra columns. Now, you saw me typing them in on the right hand side. If you're not sure what your columns are, they are neatly measured, uh, put in the dimensions and measures on the right hand side. So you can as well just drag and drop these columns in if you need to as well. So I am going to hide this bar just so we can look at the data in a bit more detail. I'm going to choose 
the duration of last month. And it will then go off and get me all the information I need to know about this call. So it'll keep the existing columns that I had before, but it will give me additional fields now, like the, the external party was in the auto attendant for 15 seconds before they were moved over to the call queue. So I can see what's going on there. Importantly now, what it's also done is given me all the people that were involved in that call. So I can see the ABDA, the main number auto attendant, the support call queue and William were all involved in that one. This one here, there was only two parts. So it was the main auto attendant number and then it jumped into the operator queue. And then here it wasn't answered. So the final part was it was transferred to voicemail. So nobody within Tiger picked it up, so it was picked up and sent to, to voicemail. We then get these crosses and ticks. So was there an auto attendant involved and was it external? Now, as a business here, we may want to know, right, we're only interested in calls that were external or were internal. So if I look at here, if I don't tick the box here, I'll be looking for calls that went to our call queue that were internal. So if I retrieve this and it will show then that the call was not internal and it also didn't go to, through an auto attendant. So the call was direct to the call queue from an internal user here. So that's useful information for us to know. And if we want it the other way around, we only want to see external users. We can then click on is external and it will then only show us our external users from here. And again, once we have this information, the uh, you can export this data to either CSV or to Excel. You can then save these widgets once you've created them. So now you're happy with this, you can save them by clicking on the save widget, giving it a name, saving it for just me, or saving it to your widget groups here. Or you may want to schedule them. So you can go through and schedule this widget to be delivered to you on a particular day. Now, one of the things that obviously is important here though is you don't want to send everybody all the queue information. So using the call queue name here, you can then filter on the specific call queues. So let's say I want to send our support manager all calls for their call queue. I can put in it contains support or I can put the full name in. And then I can add this in here as well. Now, if I wanted two call queues, so he manages two call queues, I can add in the call queue name again. And then I have to do something here, which is adding in parentheses over here to say that these are the call queues I want to look at. And then I've got a Boolean value in the middle here. So I want to change it from and to or. So I'm saying I want this call queue that contains support or this call queue that contains development. So the callers must be external and the call queue name can contain support or it can contain development. And then it will then return back those call queues for us. Now you can keep adding in more in here. This is just an example. Now you're happy with those again save it you can share this with your colleagues by exporting it schedule it um, and then you've built it up in a way that you can you know work with that data now in regards to the other question um, about auto attendant reporting um, tiger are keen to understand what information you're requiring around that so this is a call out to send either myself or your account manager all the information and statistics you require around auto attendance. And what we'll do is we will review all of that information um, and we'll determine what's possible from that feedback. And then we can obviously come back to you on that front. So if what's there doesn't, or the around auto attendance isn't enough, as I said, let us know, please. Thank you, Matt.
Um, just one thing I think that's worth picking up there. How many um, fields is there actually available to search right now? I know you gave me the number, but um, I was startled by the, the sheer So amount. in total, I think there's around about 4,400 fields across all the different analytics screens. Yeah. So, I mean, you saw there where, where Matt's using that feature to just start typing in the query. So actually, if you just start typing the first few letters of the word that you think you're looking for, what you'll see is it will list those as well. So a really handy tip if you just want to try and sort of search, they go all the different caller type fields. And as you can see, there's a huge myriad of things available in there. Um, but yeah, worth just typing in those first few letters, having a scroll through, the chances are the field you're looking for is actually going to be included in analytics. Right, thank you. So the second question we had in with regards to Teams specifically was from Scott. Um, and Scott was interested in any analytics queries that would specifically highlight failures or trends. Sure. So in Teams, there are uh, three sections of data that you can look at. You've got Teams calls, which is an overarching um, sec segment, which basically includes, includes all the sessions. And then you have this thing called Teams Media. So Teams Media contains all the information about the particular calls. Now, again, there is a great deal of information in here. Um, there is a lot of um, information around, say, for example, the, the qualities and stuff like this that you can highlight over. And it will give you over on the right hand side information about those particular fields. So if you're not sure what the CPU inefficient, uh, insufficient event ratio is, it will tell you here what, what it means. But if we're looking for um, trends and um, looking for highlighting faults, what we want to be looking for in here is we can start typing in some of the uh, fields that we're looking for. So we could look at the average audio degradation, the um, jitter on here. And again, you've got lots of different jitter flags because it could be around jitter that we, we want to see information. Uh, whether the call was um, bad or not through Jitter. Um, it could be around the device. So what we're looking for is it what device was being used at the time. So what media device driver was being used, what media device name was being used at the time. And these will start to make sense in, in, a, min, in a minute when we bring the data up. Um, it could be around things like the howling events. So a howling event is where you're getting feedback through the speaker because your colleague sat next to you with it on full volume. Um, sorry, I'm just looking at the max ratio concealed samples here. I'm just getting some of the um, fields here that we can look at and I'll look at device clipping as well. So if I start adding in some of these fields here, and add all this in, the way that the data works, if I look at the, uh, yesterday, for example, here, is that you'll get a stream between you and your colleagues. So if you make a direct call, a peer-to-peer -peer call, you'll get the audio between you, the audio between your colleague, how your colleague hears you, and how you hear your colleague. So there are four legs to a single call. So what you'll end up having is the different um, ratios between you calling them and them calling you. OK, so and it will give you then say, what was the maximum jitter? What was the driver that was being used? What were the howling events on here? Were there any clipping on the data? And what you can now do is then start to filter down. So I'm only interested in the um, the media name. So I'm only interested in the voice part. So you may be interested in the video, so we can show the video video quality or the application sharing. But in our instance, we're only really interested in the main audio. And what I can then do is say, well, we've had a complaint from one of our, our um, staff members. So let's go and add this in here. 
and let's go and do a search for a particular um, person and then it will come up with their information about their, their calls. Was there any data issues in there? Um, and what's going on with that particular call? Um, it may be the reason if the, the call was bad is be bad was because the the call failed. So it could be that we want to look at did it fail or not? Um, and so on in here. So was there a failure in here? So we can see that they had a lot of jitter here. So there was a higher lot of jitter. But we can also see that they were using their built-in microphone on their laptop. So they may be experiencing at the other end bad quality because they're not using the correct headset that was provided by the company. Um, so you can then look at why they weren't using that. It could be as well that you want to go and look at, say, right, how were they connected? What was the network IP port that they were connected to? Were they connected to Wi-Fi? What, what was their Wi-Fi signal strength? OK, and you can start to then br bring that information in to go, right, well, OK, I can see they were on this port. They had good Wi-Fi signal strength. Therefore, that should be OK. You know, it wasn't around that. So we can only put it down to that they're running through their um, their microphone on their laptop. And that's why they've got bad audio quality um, around there. So, Matt, this actually ties in quite nicely to our, our next question as well, um, whether it's like possible to identify faults or bad connectivity and analytics for Teams calls. So, you, you started to use some filters there. Could you perhaps show the audience just, I don't want to see the good calls, I just want to see the bad. So could you show us adding some filters there, please, just so that we can see the, uh, the bad connectivity type calls? Yeah, so you can start typing in, um, uh, so uh, audio. So you've got the audio classification name. So what we do is we classify these calls based upon whether they're good or poor, okay? So what we may be interested in is we want to know, and you've got the same as well for video classification. So if you're if you're looking for bad video rather than bad voice, you can then add it in here and go, right, so I'm only interested in the poor video, uh, audio call, sorry. And it will then just return all the poor video uh, audio calls here. So you can start to then look, why was it bad? Now, the great thing about this is I found three calls that had a audio classification name of poor. I don't really want to sit here and input hundreds of fields. So as a bit of advice here, at the end of each leg, you've got a button here, what we call the burger button. If we click on the burger button here, it will open a new tab and actually show you all the information about that particular call. So what it will do is it will break it down, who was on the call, how long they were on the phone for, and then it will start to break it down into different segments. So on the right hand side, you'll be able to see here, was there any failures on the main call? No, that's great. So I'm gonna go into the segments and I can come and click into here and see, right, I want to see, so I'm just going to zoom out a little bit here. On the caller, what was going on with that? So can I go and look what driver the caller was using? And that gives me then all the information about, you know, signal sent, signal received. Was there any noise level on there? That was for the caller, for the callee, what will send the same. Was there any network issues? So what was the, you know, the Wi-Fi battery charge? Um, what was their link speed if they, sorry, if they were connected, what Wi-Fi channel, what Wi-Fi driver they were using, and then on the stream information, it will then give you how long they're on the phone for, etc. Then if I'm interested in the video parts of it, again, I can go and investigate into this. So rather than me adding lots of different fields, drill into a particular call, you can then drill into the different segments within these calls here, and look at the call. 
And this is where I was looking at a call from end to end. If there are lots of different sessions within a call, it will have many sessions in here to look at. I'm just keeping it nice and simple at the moment, just looking at a single call. Otherwise, you know, it, there's a lot of data on the screen. Thank you, Matt. Um, we've had a couple of questions coming as we've gone through from Paul. Yeah. Um, one related to devices, this is a, an interesting question. So can we do a report that shows how many unique devices are in use? So, yeah. for example, a thousand Jabra Evolve, a hundred Apple AirPods, um, to, and with the purpose of helping to identify people not using Teams certified devices. Sure. So what you'll be looking for in here is adding in the media device driver and the media device name. Now you don't need the driver in particular, but you can use the device name. What you'll be then looking at is these measures here allow you to take hundreds and hundreds of rows and then measure what's going on. So you'll notice there's a clear distinction between the colors of the fields. Anything that's a measure will be a lighter field. Anything that's a dimension, it will be a darker field. If it's a measure, it means I can use this to do things like count. So I want to know how many of these media devices are active on our network by counting them up and clicking on here. So what this is also useful for is looking at all of the um, devices that are being used in here that have got the wrong version as well. So it may be these integrated really webcams here look We've got three different versions running on our network, and we know that there's a problem with Teams on this version, let's say, okay? Um, let me go and find some. So there you go. So we have um, Jabra Evolves here. And again, you can start by adding in more fields from here. So we've got some Plantronics and Jabra Evolve 20 etc in, in here okay and again it's all down to what versions and, and so on and here again if i don't want the device driver you simply remove the field and do a count in in here it could be then that you want to add in the the person's name etc again and then you can start to add all that in thank you um and one more i think just a more general question not not so much as a demo but does the Teams and Office 365 integration occur at tenant level on the Microsoft side, i.e. is it usable on an NHS shared tenancy? Um, currently, it's not available to pick out specific particular tenants within the, the tenanted system. It's an uh, all or nothing situation at the moment. OK, um, that's that's where we are at the moment with, with that. OK, thank you. Okay, um, so look, that, that's our section on Teams. We've actually, the next thing I want to talk about is actually a tele Teams and telephony integration. So a lot of our customers and, and perhaps quite a few of you on this call are using both together. Um, so Janine's asked us um, questions here regarding they use uh, Teams for their frontline as a contact center solution. And then the back office is still on, a, I think it was a CUCM, but certainly on a, on a telephony switch. Um, you know, is it possible to do reporting to see where the crossovers happen? Um, looking again at timings, where there are faults in the crossovers. Uh, again, looking at total calls during the period, not just right. That was on the phone. That was on Teams. Um, we need to be able to report. I know there's a lot here, Matt. So I'll pick some of these back up as we go through. But do you want to start showing us kind of some of it, and we'll, we'll we'll talk about as we go through. Absolutely. So what I'm going to do is. I just went into the telephony analytics here to start looking at this and I did kind of cover this briefly earlier, but there is a key distinction between what a call and a call leg is. So when you're monitoring and, and getting stats back to the business, what you need to do is understand what their um, requirements are when you run this. So are they on about a call as a whole? So how many calls came into the business? Or are they on about how many legs happen then after that point? So let's say a call comes in into the business and then there are 50 transfers. Do they want to know that there was one call that came into the business? Or did they want to know that there was one call came in and there was 50 transfers? OK, so it's key to understand the difference between the two. Um, that legs obviously does all the transfers and all the individual parts. Calls is looking at the high level, so there is 
the many legs go to one call. So talking about um, the question here from Janine is, well, how many calls did we get per, per day? So again, using our analytics, we can use the calls. And what we can then do is say, right, what we want to know is by date, how many calls did we have it have here? Now, if you've got multiple, um, if you've got multiple um, PBXs on your network, you may then want to break it down by CDR source as well. So once we're in here, we want to see count all of our calls that have happened per day. So we're going to say, right, on this date for this CDR source, I want to know how many calls there were. So this will then give me per day how many calls per CDR source came into the business. And then if you want to take out that, you can obviously remove the CDR source part. And, and can we easily add in there to, to show how many were answered, how many went to voicemail, how many were abandoned? Yeah, so there is a um, there is a final outcome in, in here as well that you can add in into that as well. So you can add in the... I think it's under flag. So was it answered or not? So you can add it in there. So how many calls then came in answered on that PBX? How many came in and weren't answered on that PBX? OK, so this is what I'm saying about looking at the call as a whole. But again, it's where they need to be specific when they ask the question. Is it calls as a whole or is it the legs part of the call? Um, in here so looking at is it the individual parts of the call because there could be if i add in leg order there could be many legs to a particular call i i, I think looking at the question i think it's two parts the first part is what you've demonstrated yeah just, just the title i think the second part is looking at was it transferred who the caller spoke to to begin with who it was transferred to you know was it answered when it was transferred so i think it is perhaps two different Queries we're, yeah. we're looking at. So in here, this call here, for example, had six legs. So it's one call, six legs. And I can take this call when I want to investigate it. And again, same as on the other screen, I've got my burger button here. And what I can do is then click into this and see end to end what happened on that call. So I can see where it started. I can see where it ended. So that's one call, six legs through there. And we'll be able to see from here, what was the initiating reason and what was the terminating reason of that particular call? So this is quite an important part. Why did it come to me? Why did it leave me? So from the initiating reason, normal means that a handset was picked up or was picked up. It wasn't answered. So the call out, I mean, it didn't ring on that phone because it was redirected. It was redirected, connected to 8007, then transferred on. And then you'll be able to see here that it did an inquiry, it didn't get picked up, it was transferred and so on until eventually again, they'll get connected and then transferred on from that part there. So looking at a, an end to end of the call paths, you can do this here. And what the key is between this is and this is the same on um, on Teams and on telephony. There is a call GUID, and this call GUID is the unique part of the call that you can copy this, do a search for that particular call GUID. Oh, sorry, copy that. It's that there, and you can do a search for that particular call as well and it will show you all the legs of that particular call. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, so we're going to look a little bit more widely back uh, into telephony now. So we've had a couple of questions coming in regarding analytics queries and telephony. So second question from um, Scott away from the team. So can we look at failed calls grouped by error? So calls with a low MOS score, calls with packet loss. So again, it's looking at that. Why were there failure reasons? Why were there faults? But more in the telephony realm. Sure. So 
again, what I'm going to do is just, I'm just going to clear all these menu options just to come back. So with Teams, with telephony as well, what you end up having is if I add in the CDR source, because this is an important part, what I want to know is what's my SIP termination cause value and what is my full termination cause value, okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a special field called um, leg count. And what this will allow me to do then is count how many times we've had one of these values here. Now, if I run that for today, it's saying for the Microsoft Teams calling, we've had a one where the SIP termination cause of value is zero and the call termination cause value is zero as well. Now, if I run that over a longer period, let's run it over this year. There you go. So on my Teams calling, they're all zero, which is good. But on my direct routing, I've had some 403s. So what I could do is then filter and find all my 403 errors. With my PBX data here, what I've got is these call termination cause values. Now, these um, cause values here are a code that you can look up um, on the Cisco website to find out what they mean. So I happen to know that one off the top of my head. That means call splitting. So the call was split, so it was transferred, etc. from here. Um, and 16 means normal. But you've in here we've had some 102s, we've had some 145961783 errors. Okay. We can then start to investigate those. So what I want to know is what where are those calls? So what I can do is I can copy that that code. I can then open up another tab. I can um, add in my call termination cause values and say, right, well, show me all of the legs. Oh, I didn't copy and paste. I'll add only because I know them off the top of my head, 16. Go and get me all the ones where they're 16. Add them up the top there so we can see them. And there you go. So we'll get all the ones that are 16 there. We can go and look at those then individually, go right, well, what happened on that call? Click on the burger button and then we can start to go and look here. Now, those ISDN termination, SIP termination cause values are on the front screen so you can see what's going on with them. And again, Matt, I guess we could very easily put a filter in if, if there was an individual that said my equipment doesn't work, my you know, I'm constantly experiencing issues. Yeah, so you can start adding in things like MOS scores. So you can add MOS, called MOS, so which way around it is, uh, calling MOS scores. Um, you can add the MOS quality rating. Um, so this is the, uh, the MOS quality rating that we get. Um, let's see, uh, calling calling. Now, you may also, depending on what version of Cisco that you run, you can also get the um, SCR, so the quality rating. So what was the called SCR quality rating? What was the calling? Calling SCR quality rating um, around here as well. And it will give you things like um, Try and find. Oh, uh, let me try and find some for last month. It will give you stats then around your MOS scores and your SCR scores. And again, you can see me here sorting on these fields, and we'll be able to see here then what was my calling MOS quality rating? Was it good, bad, poor? What was my MOS scores, etc. In here, so. If the data provide, is provided to us, we can then obviously provide you, on, provide you information on that. And again, if you're looking for a particular call, just click on the burger button here. You've got your, um, underneath your quality ones here, you'll have all of the fields that are available to you on the quality. So again, you don't need to add in all of your, those fields. If you're looking for a particular call and you found it, 
just click into it and you'll be able to see all the information here about it. And again, once you've created these widgets, you can then save them. So if I just come over to my event here, I've got the Moz and SCR ratings already here created for me. And I can come over to here and I can see all of those information about all the packets sent, packets received, what was my SCR rating, what was my MOZ rating, etc. on that call. And just, I can just while filter. we're touching on widgets there, Matt, if I were to edit that widget, can I, can I easily do that? Yeah, you certainly can. So there's two ways you can do it. You can click on the edit button at the top here and that will take you back to the main screen and then you can edit it. Or if you don't, if you're a bit cautious and you don't want to touch it, what you can do is you can click the export button here, right click and copy. And then on the left hand side, what you've got is an import widget option. And then you can right click, paste, and it will then recreate the widget for us. So you're not touching it, the one that you've already created, you're creating a blank one with all of the details in, and then you can make changes and save again. Right, thank you. Okay, so um, the next question on telephony is from Alan. So this is looking at report, and actually this will nicely tie back into kind of the creation of that widget again. Sure. So we're looking at a, a manager's report, so it's more high level. So it's the number of calls received each day of the week, a percentage of calls each day of the week, a percentage of calls not answered each day of the week, and a percentage of calls where the line was busy each day of the week. So I'm sure. conscious that this perhaps touches more into the reporting field than the analytics field, but perhaps we can give a, a little example for Alan there as well. Absolutely. So I think this is one of the, the, the key things that, you know, analytics lends itself to in allowing you to get data out. Now, unfortunately, we can't give percentages here, but what we can do is provide you the information and you could work out the percentages from here. So if we did it as a in the reporting function. Yeah, we can, yeah. we can, and we'll we'll try and touch on that briefly in a, in a few moments of the reporting side. So with analytics, what you can do is you can um, bring down um, the level of information to what, what are called quarter hour bins, or what we would call them as half hour bins or quarter hour bins. So you can, the reporting can go down to hour, quarter hour or half hour bins to be able to do these reports. But the question here is by by day and by weekday. So what I want to start with is I want to know, was it a weekday? What was my weekday number? Um, I did weekday short as well, just so you can see the difference between the two. And I also want to see my ISO week number. OK, so if I run this now, I can look at this and go, right, brilliant. So it's my ISO week number, my weekday, my weekday number, and my weekday short. So I can work out from there what is that correct on what, what I'm looking for. Now, what I from here then is what I want to add in is my group name. So this is my hunt groups, okay? So again, I'm gonna then add this in here. Now I've got lots that are blank. So I'm only interested where there's a value. So it's where it's not blank. So what I'm interested in is all the calls then that has a group name. So here, so you've got hunt group zero, hunt group 800, hunt group 8035. OK, so you can see now I'm starting to build it up from here. So what I would then want to know is what's my call outcome? So were they answered? Were they not answered? Who picked up the phone? So my call digits. I also then want to see who is my call party name. And I want to see what department they're in. So I can add in called level party level two. So that's their department. Now, it may be three, four, five, six. If you want the whole um, part in here, you can add your called tree path. And this contains the whole string in here. And then what we can do then is we want to count. Um, how many times this has happened. So what we're going to do is then click on here, 
and then we're going to click count. So what we're breaking it down by then is days and the outcomes here. So if I run that, you'll see on week 44, which is a Wednesday, group zero was picked up by Gonzalo eight times. OK, now maybe I want to add the duration as well. So let's add the talk time in. Now, if I add talk time in here, what I also have to do is sum up that. So I want to do that. But I could also add in what's my talk time again and what's my what's the user's average talk time. So let's add in average as well. So for now, week 44 on a Wednesday on group zero, it was picked up by Gonzalo in sales eight times. Total talk time of 7 minutes 47 seconds and an average talk time of 58 seconds. OK, I then can schedule this to be emailed to me. I can save it again to run it from here as well. What you can also do is if there's too much information, so I don't really care about who picked it up. Let's just start removing the bits that you don't need. So remove the information about that. You'll get less rows, but it will tell you then on a Wednesday, there were nine calls that went into group that were connected and eight that didn't. And obviously the groups the hunt group and you can drag group name down into the filter. So if we only wanted to see 8,003. Yeah, sure. So we can, yep, you can say, I only want to see group uh, 8201 because that's my hunt group. And let's do it for last month. It will then give me all the information. So on week 39, which is a Sunday, how many connected and not connected calls, etc. from here. I then export that information as well. OK, thank you. OK, conscious we've got just a little over five minutes left. Um, we had a couple of re more reporting questions sure. coming. Um, given we've got a few minutes, should we, should we have a quick look at reporting as well? So um, we had one from Kumar, which is how easy is it to identify spare and unused extension number on the OpenScape 4000 using Tiger? So a very specific yeah. uh, reporting question, but is it something we can do? Uh, absolutely. So we're built in with the reporting tool. So again, I'm going to come back to my telephony and click on reports. Um, I'm just going to expand this back just so we can go through some of these here. So under the management section here, we have some pre-built reports that give you this information. So we have two reports here that which are key to understand, which is unknown endpoints. So what an unknown endpoint is, is a endpoint that has generated data over the period that you've selected that is not in your directory. So therefore, if you try and run a, a report over um, a particular extension, it won't be in um, your report. It's not in the directory. OK. It will be in analytics. It will be everywhere else, but it just won't be assigned to a person and it won't be assigned to a department. OK. But there is also zero usage endpoints. Now, what zero usage endpoints does is it tells you over the period that you select. So I'm going to select, um, let's say, four or five months here worth of data. I can pick my CDR source. So this is the important part here. So I'm only interested in our PABX data. You can use Teams calling, it's up to you. I'm just going to use our PBX data here. And then I'll click generate. Now, I really recommend that you do this over a longer period of time. Don't do it over a couple of days because, you know, people could be on holiday, could, people could be on, you know, a reasonable term sick leave um, and so on. And then what this will do is go right over this period, these two numbers here are in our directory, and that's why the first report is important. They're in, they're in our directory, but they have not generated any CDR records. They've not been involved in any calls over that period. Therefore, 
that extension there hasn't been used for five months. I can go and talk to the development manager about Neville and they'll probably go, yeah, Neville doesn't need a phone anymore or, um, you know, Nev left, Neville left the company three months ago or something, you know, and you can go, ah, okay. So I can go and then go pick up that phone again and reuse it somewhere else. Okay, so it's the zero end usage endpoints here, and it could be something that you schedule. This can sometimes be a bit of a long running report, especially if we run it over 12 months, for example. So schedule it, schedule it to run at the end of um, every month to deliver to your inbox so that you've got that information of available to you, rather than coming in and running it. If it comes to your inbox, you can then open it up, look at the numbers and go, well, actually, yeah, I can take those licenses back off people and start to issue them to people that, that, that need it. And obviously, for all or some of the data is required to the managers that, that are on the list. Correct. And the fact is, you know, you can export this as, as, as um, Excel worksheets, PowerPoints, however you need it to, to, to come to you, you can export that info. Great, thank you. Um, and with a few minutes left, the last question we have is from Roland. So um, create some of reports for stations and trunk groups. Yep, so there are many reports for creating on, on um, stations. So I'll just go with the um, departmental call summary report here. As I said, have a look through some of these, they are available. Once you've selected your report, you need to go through the parameters on the left-hand side, selecting, say, your date range. So let's choose last month, for example. But what's important here is your directory items. So when you go into the directory item picker, the items here are what, what you're selecting. This is what I want to run in regards to. So I want to run it on the whole of Tiger, okay? Then what you can do is then you can break it down by what level you want to see on the report. So I'll show you quickly an example. If I select Tiger and I select level two and generate that, I'll get a total for all of the departments. OK, that's what I've selected. Well, actually, what I need to do is break it down a little more. So I want to add it to my staff members, which is level three and generate that, it will then have all the staff members in here. Now, what I also want to do from here, though, is I want to show all of my um, endpoints. So people have more than one endpoint. It may have they have a mobile phone, a Teams, a Cisco handset, a Hyper 4000 handset. So you have this show endpoints option at the bottom here. And I can generate that now. And what it will do now is here you go, it will break it down to say, right, Joe here in accounts. Her total was 52 calls. And then how is that broken down for her? So what's the breakdown across her numbers to create the 52 calls? So just by simply clicking the show endpoints, that's how you add it in there. And, and I think, Matt, well, while, while we're in here showing this, you mentioned scheduling. Um, do you want to just take us quickly through how to schedule the report to sure. go through the box, because I'm conscious there is a few steps before, before it just arrives. Yeah. So quickly going through the schedule here, once you're happy with your report, if you click the schedule button here, it will then create the schedule by going through here and you'll follow a wizard. So by giving it a name, and this is the same for um, widgets as well, it's the exact same screen from here. So. Click on the, give it a name, give it a description, give it a priority. So priority is quite important. If you if you need to get it, go click it to high, because if there are 10 jobs running at the same time, it'll do the high first and the lows last, okay? However you want to schedule it for, so I want it to run forever, and I want it to start on this particular day. Just be careful though, if you set it into the past, it will, catch up to that point. So if you look at the thing here, it will try and run it already. As soon as I start it, the red line is where we are now, and it will try and run that execution for you. So I want this to run every month. The data I want it to contain is the previous, so minus one month. But I could, if I was doing it on my unknown, or my zero usage endpoint report, I could get it to run every month for the last 12 months. 
And visually here, you'll see the red line is where we are now. It will go and then run that report for that period there. So visually, you'll see what you're selecting. Um, batch, we won't, we won't worry too much about the moment, but then your parameters will be brought across from your report here. And then you just need to define where you want it to go. So do you want it to be emailed to someone? So if you have got people in your um, in your system, you can come in here and you can go and then select a particular person, or you can manually type in the email here. You can FTP, or you can send it to a file location on your network. Sorry, let's have one in here. Let's just add. Yeah. A failure notification is to let you know if it failed, and then in your delivery options, what format you would like it to be in. Once you've done that, just come down and click Submit, or if you want to create another one to go to a different department, make changes, you can click Create Another, and it will then load you back into the wizard, keeping all the settings that you had before, and then you may just want to update the parameters, etc., in here. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, um, I've been through the chat. I've seen the um, questions. I think we've answered them all. Paul, there was one question that you had there about widgets. I'll talk to you about that offline. Um, we do offer a widget library, um, but we'll, we'll speak about that offline. Um, I'm just seeing one final quick question come in. Um, is there any type of DDI reporting management coming at all so that we could see what DDIs are in use and spare to help with assigning numbers to new users as Tiger is able to see all the tenancy data? And I know that's put you on the spot, Matt. We haven't prepped for that one. And okay. the answer can okay. be to be concluded and we'll come back to you. There is inform that so out of the the box there's no ddi management but what we do have is in the um uh i'm in the wrong one here um in the so I'm, I'm assuming that's a team specific one under the pstn legs there is a field called um dnis digits the dnis digits is the number that was rang to come into the business okay so you'll see here that's the number that was called to come in um, so if you run that over a longer period, um, and again, it may be that you, what, what you want is actually a report like this with a leg count against it. Or last month, let's say. And again here, then it will give you how many times that, that DDI number was being used, okay? then you could probably export that, cross-reference it, and do something with it. Um, but there is no DDI management built into PRISM, no, at the moment. All right. Thank you. OK, that takes us to time very nicely. Thank you, Matt. Thank you for sharing yeah. your expertise. Thank you for everyone for the, the questions you asked in advance and for the questions that you've asked as we've gone along. We will um, we will say goodbye for now. We hope to run a future session, so watch out for the next Ask the Expert. And we hand you back over to you, Caroline. Thank you. I was going to say, don't be complete goodbye. Don't let everyone go. <laughs> Thanks to do. Um, so, yeah, thanks very much, Matt Richards. Uh, always informative, always useful information that comes out of those sessions. And it doesn't matter how many times I look at people's analytics and, and live the day to day in, day out with over 4000 pieces of information there. It really is always something new to find. Mm -hmm.